Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I've the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast. That's Matt Shipman. How are you today, Matt? I'm good, Brian. It's good to be with you at Horse Center. Absolutely, Matt. As we inch closer to the Breeders' Cup, only about seven weeks away now at beautiful Keeneland here in Lexington, Kentucky, Matt, we have a bunch of Breeders' Cup winning win in your in races at Woodbine on the turf, which is always fun to handicap. Big field for the Woodbine Mile, which is the headliner there at Woodbine. But we're also going to look ahead to the Breeders' Cup Juvenile a little bit, and maybe the Kentucky Derby, you never know, because I think this year's Iroquois at Churchill Downs for the two-year-old males came up pretty strong. Matt, are you ready to roll? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. We'll go north of the border first for the million-dollar grade one Woodbine Mile, Matt. This has often been a key indicator for the Breeders' Cup mile. This year could be no different as uh, as we see a big name in there and a Breeders' Cup winner already, even though he's only three years old, Matt. Modern Games, a Godolphin homebred. He's a son of one of the great turf sires in the world, Dubawi. Modern Games was a terrific winner of the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year for trainer Charlie Appleby, and he's been very good this year as a three-year-old. Yeah, it sure has. We all certainly remember that uh, Breeders' Cup uh, juvenile turf but last year. We remember it on the positive for the uh, uh, outstanding performance by Modern Games, but we also remember all the, the pre-race difficulty that there was. But uh, yeah, Modern Games uh, stamped himself as a very good one for Charlie Appleby, uh, who has become just so adept at shipping over uh, from Europe. Uh, not just for the Breeders' Cup, but uh, shipping into New York for uh, the turf triple and shipping uh, to Woodbine for the for this series of races. And and you mentioned that Modern Games is off to a good start this year, and he is. Most recently, Brian, he was second in a Group One, but Brian, he was second to uh, to Banid who is unbeaten in, uh, I don't know, how many is it, eight or nine starts over in his career in Europe? Yeah, Baid is the best turf horse in the world. Uh, the son of Frankel Matt is 10 for 10. We just found out he won't be stretching out again to 12 furlongs for the arc. He's going instead to uh, to Ascot's uh, big uh, 10 furlong race. But anyway, yeah, he raced against the best horse in the world. There's an awful lot to like here about modern games. Not only has he come to North America once already, and looked really good in winning the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year at Del Mar. But as you said, uh, it, he's he's coming off a very big race uh, last time to Baid, where he was uh, he was in touch with Baid, uh, beating less than two lengths uh, at uh, Glorious Goodwood last time, Matt. And, and that came on a firmer turf. Modern Games looks like a horse uh, who can run on any type of uh, ground, any type of turf, uh, condition but uh, he might be even better when the turf is a little bit more firm so we'll be watching that as the week progresses up there uh outside of toronto but uh, charlie mm -hmm. appleby too is a story because last year he brought in a couple two-year-olds to win at woodbine and i think he's even outdone aiden o'brien in recent years matt is the trainer most likely to come from europe with a live horse and to win a big turf race over here so certainly modern games uh he's a classic winner at a mile over in France this year, he's he's only one for four, but uh, that last race, second to Baid against older horses, was absolutely uh, excellent. And if he can run back to that, he is strictly the horse to beat here. But I think we got to talk about Ivar because Ivar has been in the last two editions of the Breeders' Cup Mile, Matt. And I, I tell you what, combined, Ivar has been beaten three and a half lengths in those two editions of the Breeders' Cup Mile the last two years. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, you know, a, a wily veteran, uh, veteran um, who uh, last year raced exclusively in grade one company and I think is a winner of this uh, Woodbine Mile a couple years ago. So many excellent victories in his career. He came back. He's got only one start this year, Brian, but came back with a nice victory uh, in the Schuster Mile at Indiana Downs. Obviously, which was being used as a prep race for this Woodbine Mile. 
Yeah, and then the Woodbine Mile is getting him ready for his third run in the Breeders' Cup Mile. He actually won the uh, Shadwell Turf Mile. That's his grade one score a couple years ago at Keeneland. But uh, he's been a really good miler, as his Breeders' Cup Mile results would attest. Yeah, his races have certainly been spaced out now. It's It's been just about two years since he got that grade one win. But uh, he was lightly raced last year and ran a very good race to be third in the Breeders' Cup Mile. Like you said, only one race this year for Ivar. But it was a very good in fact it was a turf uh, a turf course record uh at horseshoe indianapolis there where he uh, broke the, the uh, track record for a mile 16th on the grass in his return race he should be ready there's also some speed in here so that uh should help ivar who likes to make one run matt next on our morning line we have the philly i, I love to say the name of this philly wakanaka i'm going to probably emphasize every syllable every time i say the name wakanaka but wakanaka was a nice young filly in Italy. She's an Irish bred. Team Ballard brings her over. Uh, and she's proven to be a certainly a graded stakes performer against fillies and mares on turf. She couldn't quite beat the top brown fillies uh, uh, in her first few tries over here. But uh, she comes in off a nice win over the turf course, the E.P. Taylor turf course at Woodbine. Yeah, and... Uh, uh as you mentioned, came over from Europe and went into the barn of Bill Mott. And as we've talked about in some recent shows, and for good reason, Bill Mott uh, is not afraid to take shots with horses and and has had a lot of an awful lot of success uh, recently. And now I, I love the way you say it. I, I hope I don't mess it up. Wakanaka uh, 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 is uh, his recent horse where he's going to take a shot and and you fairly mentioned that there's some speed in this in this race i think there's a lot of horses that are interested in running on the front end and uh that should set things up uh, nicely for wakanaka uh who won the dance smartly a grade two um in preparation for this wood mile we'll see if she's good enough to uh uh contend for the win or 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 you know get a top three finish for and get a piece of this big purse yeah and, and philly and mares we've seen it over and over again where they've uh, performed well when given the chance especially on turf and uh, even in this race they performed well in years past so wakanaka basically matt i i, I channel my inner jim henson uh uh, I, I, I'm not sure what Muppet character I'm doing there, but uh, I'm trying to say her name like that uh, that Muppet Wakanaka would do. Hey, next on our odds, Matt, here is Finest Sound, and he is the other European. There's actually two Europeans in here coming over. Modern Games, the big name, the one we're all familiar with, coming off that good second to Bailly. But Finest Sound has put together a uh, he, he still hasn't won a stakes race but he's put together a nice year uh he's a winner over in europe this year and in a grade one in dubai or a group one in dubai and then a group two uh in, in england he's come close so finest sound is bringing some good uh good form over in europe for trainer simon christopher yeah and all of those credentials and the trainer that you mentioned mean that uh got to pay attention to a european with a, with that kind of record and those kind of credentials especially making their first trip over uh, um, you know like you mentioned before uh, charlie appleby is has just so mastered the art of uh, shipping over from uh, from europe we'll see how fine a sound uh, uh, will handle that but you know at 8 to 1 uh, on our morning line and with the past performances that uh, that he brings over from Europe, uh, you got to consider. Yeah, you got you have to consider him, Matt. And, and I, I'm going to keep an eye on this odds board as we get closer to the race, because uh, sometimes they let the other European go a little bit. And this is a horse who should not be double digits here in the Woodbine Mile. He's a horse that could very well run a good race. Another horse I think could run a good race in here, Matt, is Cheryl Spite. Uh, the last race was a little disappointing. It was a little shorter. Maybe he had a little trouble. But if you go back to earlier this year, he's a grade one winner at Keeneland. I've always thought this horse has uh, talent. Uh, recent races since that grade one win in the spring at Keeneland have not looked quite as good. But I, I think he likes a mile on the turf, and I think he likes to rally. Cheryl Spite, 
probably will be somewhat forgotten with all these good horses in here. And I, he's a horse I could see bounce back for one of the masters of the turf, Roger Raphael. Yeah, and no doubt he's going to come with uh, uh, with very good odds. Uh, as you mentioned in the past, you know, in, in grade one company, he won that Maker's Mark mile. He was fourth in the Turf Classic. Uh, and, and in this year, you know, he had that strange uh, uh, and, and decent third place finish on the dirt in the Salvatore Mile uh, uh, at, at Monmouth Park um, against Hot Rod Charlie and Mind Control. Uh, which was, uh, I remember going down for that race thinking, wow, this is an, an, an unusual and or uh, ambitious placement from a trainer like Roger uh, Atfield. So, yeah, uh, uh, the potential is there and, and certainly the odds will be there. The odds will be there. I like that. I, I think a mile is his best distance. And uh, yeah, he, he's a talented horse on any surface, but I think a mile with some speed on the grass is probably his best game. Matt, as I look around this field here, there's 11 horses. We've mentioned uh, about half of them, but uh, there's no horse in here who I say, what, what's he doing in here? He doesn't belong in here. All of the others have some credentials. You got last year's winner, Town Cruise. I don't know if he's had has as good form as he did going into last year, but he could return uh, after two starts this year to to better form. He's got a lot of speed, as does Get Smokin, who, um, who who pops up. He was a two-time winner in the States on turf last year. Hasn't won yet this year, but he's running in good company. Uh, it looks like Town Cruz and Get Smokin could be destined uh, for a little pace battle here in this one-mile race. Yeah, for sure, along with a couple of others who have uh... – who are going to be longer shots who are interested in the speed you're talking about get smoking from the barn of Mark Cassie, who we know has won uh, the Woodbine mile two years in a row, uh, not too long ago. I think it was 2016 um, and 2017 and town cruise just for point of information is taking the blinkers off. Seems like the trainer's trying to shake things up and, and get him back to, uh, his better form w where he won this race last year. Yeah, I, I do think it was a little bit weaker edition that he won last year, and, and he certainly wasn't pressured, pressured on the pace like I imagine he will be. The blinkers off is an interesting uh, change for him because uh, he is a speed horse. We, we wonder if that uh, is uh, going to take a little speed off, but but probably not. He's a speed horse. And, and Cassie's other horse in here, March to the Arch, has a pretty good history in this race with a second and a fourth the last two years. And unlike Get Smoking, he wants to come from way out of it. He's a millionaire, Matt. Uh, I don't know as a seven-year-old if his best days are behind him, but he's a horse that you can't throw out. And then you got Homer Screen coming from California by way of South America or coming from South America by way of California as he's been racing in California for the last year. Hasn't broken through in a graded stake out there, but he's been running pretty decently with a late run, uh, most recently running in the Eddie Reed. Yeah, and before that, he had a second in the uh, in a grade three, the American, um, trained by Neil Drysdale, who I think has a win in this race a number of years ago. Yeah, it's an interesting field. We haven't even mentioned the Canadian Horse of the Year, Mighty Heart. I don't know if he's as good on turf. I don't know if he's as good enough to win a grade one race like this, but he's in the race. And and War Bomber is a, a stakes winner at Woodbine and, and over the Woodbine turf as well. An interesting 11-horse field. All eyes will be on modern games, though. Uh, Breeders' Cup winner, like we said last year, coming over off a big performance last time. Matt, uh, Woodbine actually has three turf races that are Breeders' Cup winning year in races. The other races on Saturday are the summer and the uh, uh, Natama for two-year-old Colts and two-year-old Phillies. Let's, uh, let's get a quick word from our sponsor here, Matt, which this week is Woodbine. Woodbine Turf Racing Super Saturday on September 17th. The $1 million Rico Woodbine Mile highlights a jam-packed day of events on the road to the Breeders' Cup World Championships. Win and you're in. Wager Woodbine today. All right, so big day at Woodbine on the turf. Get ready for the Breeders' Cup with those turf races, but also we need to get ready for the Breeders' Cup 
on the dirt and uh, maybe the Kentucky Derby. Like I said, I think this Iroquois came up really nice at Churchill Downs. A mile 16th this year on Saturday at Churchill. They have the Philly version of Pocahontas, but we're going to focus on the males, Matt. And there's some good looking undefeated horses in this Iroquois. I guess we could start with Damon's Mound, who deserves to be favored off of his two performances. I don't know if he will be favored, though. Deserves to be the favorite for sure, uh, uh, Brian. The only horse in the field with two victories. And that second victory uh, was in the grade two Saratoga special uh, after breaking his maiden by a huge margin. Uh, I think it was 12 some lengths. And then heading up to Saratoga where he uh, caught a small field of four, but it included a very, very promising horse named Gulfport, who I think was the favorite in the race. But but Damon's Mound handled him easily as he had just a little bit of distance um, to go the six and a half furlongs for trainer Michelle Lovell. I think it was her first her first career victory at Saratoga. So it was a big, big win for the horse and the trainer. Yeah, this this is a, this is a little bit of a developing story with uh, Damon's Mount. We'll see about the mile and the 16th on Saturday, but this is uh, Michelle Lovell, uh, not, not a, a trainer that uh, you see uh, in some of the biggest races in the country, but it sure looks at, to this point like she's got a Breeders' Cup horse in Damon's Mount. He was absolutely terrific in his debut at Churchill Downs, uh, winning off by more than 12 lengths. And he carried that over, as Matt said, to a graded stakes win at Saratoga, beating a talented horse in Gulfport. They're in a graded stakes race. This is a horse who's also working at Colonial Downs, but he has experience over the Churchill track, and uh, he's the horse to beat. It'll be interesting to see if he's bet that way or not, because I think the horse that could go favorite in here and you can actually see that uh, line where we have echo again as the slightest favorite over damon's mount echo again has all the ingredients of a horse that's going to get that not the pedigree the stable he got that in his first race a debut performance at saratoga that was very impressive yeah brian that is for sure all of those things you said uh to to lay it out more specifically, uh, Echo again is from the connections of Steve Asmussen and Winchell Thoroughbreds, and they have they have had so much success in the past. Of course, one of their their all time greats was Gunrunner. Echo again is by Gunrunner, a homebred from Winchell Thoroughbreds. Like you mentioned, uh, the word was out about this horse. There were so many really strong two-year-old male, uh, first-time winners at Saratoga this summer, more than one of them from the Asmussen barn. And Echo, again, was a uh, sizzling, speedy victory by almost seven lengths. Yeah, certainly one of the most impressive of all those really good debut performances by juveniles at Saratoga this year. Echo, again, could be the male version of Echo Zulu from last year, Matt, who who uh, who, who debuted, de debuted in New York and then just rolled all the way to her Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies win with speed. Uh, she was able to carry her speed. Echo, again, so far certainly reminds me of that. Same connections uh, uh, pedigree-wise and uh, I guess even the name a little bit. This is a, a, an Echo again instead of an Echo Zulu, E-A-E-Z. I think he's going to get that, uh, both him and Damon's Mound, as, as most of the horses in the race, though, they'll have to see what they can do at a mile and 16th. One horse I think will like a mile and 16th, Matt, the third choice here on our odds is Jace's Road. And, and I heard about Jace's Road before his debut performance. I knew they were high on him. He was actually a pretty high-priced yearling, as uh, a lot of sons of Quality Road are. But this is a well-bred son of Quality Road. He made his debut over out west here in Kentucky, over at Ellis Park. And, and if you wonder about a horse coming from Ellis Park, there, there are a lot of good two-year-olds that start their career in the summer over at Ellis Park. So don't hold that against them. He was also very impressive in his debut win at Ellis Park uh, and looking like a horse who probably will be no better than four to one, not with the, the two biggies that we already talked about. 
Yeah, and you mentioned uh, a high sales price to be specific, Brian. It was $510,000 as a yearling at Keeneland for uh, 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 high-profile connections. I think it was a, it's a partnership of Olbo Stables and West Point Thoroughbreds. Uh, it seems like a horse that has been well meant uh, from that purchase uh, as a yearling. And, and I interpreted Brian as, hey, OK, he, he didn't come north uh, with Brad Cox's Saratoga band, but uh, it seems like maybe they, they, they had this path in mind the entire time. Uh, uh, get that first victory at Ellis Park and point to this first Kentucky Derby points race uh, at Churchill Downs. Yes, uh, and 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 I actually know that to be true. They 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 mentioned to me that Chase's Road was going to be pointed to the Iroquois after uh, after Zell's Park win a while ago. So I've been looking forward to seeing Chase's Road in his second start, which has come up uh, extremely tough. Uh, but uh, in uh, Damon's Mound and Echo again, and Chase's Road, who the the third of which I think less people know about. But in those three, I think you have um, three. Uh, there have been a lot, both on the East Coast and West Coast, of, of really impressive looking young two-year-olds this year. But I think we have three of the finest here in the Iroquois. And again, I'll emphasize the stretch out that they're all making to a mile and 16th for the, for the race. Uh, McPeak has a couple of long shots in here who won at Ellis Park. I, I'm not jumping on them. Curly Jack uh, has shown speed. He stakes experience. He, he was able to come off the pace a little last time when just missing at a stakes race at Ellis Park. Ran pretty well at Saratoga. Uh, confidence game, Matt, could be a good one. But Damon's Mound really took it to him in, in, in their respective debut performances against each other. He was way back. But then he came right back and won easy, maybe furthering the... Uh, the uh, the ability of Damon's Mount when he won his second race for fun. Uh, maybe Confidence Game is the horse that I'm most interested in of the rest of this field. Yeah, uh, like you said, in this field, we're, we're talking about uh, nine horses, and the horse with the most races is, is three. So, you know, we're, we're talking about inexperienced horses here. Uh, uh, that you know who knows what's going to happen especially because most of them are going to be going that two turns that mile and a 16th for the first time and so so in a way this race is definitely a little bit of a of a proving ground you know uh, you mentioned the kenny mcpeak runners honed who's 20 to 1 in our morning line is by uh, sharp Azteca, who has been just a sensation in his first crop, Brian. Uh, a lot of horses that were able to be purchased for relatively small prices because of, you know, Sharp Azteca, Azteca was a fast horse, but, you know, who knows what to expect. But he has, you know, uh, for people who took a chance on uh, his first crop, they have done very well. And, and, Honed is one of them. He uh, wanted a mile. It was a race that was intended for the turf that got scratched down to a field of four. Um, so who knows what that performance is, but he's got a mile. Yeah, and that's one thing. I, I, I went through the McPeak courses pretty quick, but they both won at a mile, which is uh, something that the favorites have yet to do. So that will be interesting. Um, I, I'm just looking forward to this Iroquois because I, I see a lot of potential and uh, perhaps we can see that uh, potential fulfilled as soon as the Breeders' Cup uh, Juvenile. You mentioned Sharp Azteca. He's got a two-year-old out in Iowa that is just yeah. running crazy figure sprinting out there and it'll be interesting to see uh, what becomes of him as well. But for now, we're talking the Iroquois map. We also talked about the Woodbine Mile. Right now, we, uh, we got to give the 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 uh, viewers here the the listeners here our top picks matt which we always enjoy doing and matt and i are always uh uh on different horses for our for our top picks so matt uh, take it away i'm gonna let you go first in the woodbine mile okay brian well 
uh, our regular horse center viewers know that uh, I've got so much respect for Charlie Appleby, and and I, I'm pretty sure that Modern Games was a horse that I fancied in the uh, uh, in the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Turf last year. Brian, I I I, I just think he's a lot better than the rest of this field. Um, so modern games is going to be my pick in the Woodbine mile. Matt, I'm with you. I'm with you. <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm with you on the favorite here. Uh, I just, you know, I like, I like some things. I think Cheryl Spite, I think finest sound both could run at very good odds in here. And I think Ivar is a, is, is, is a very good model and he's proven that the last few years, but who do I really think is going to win this race? There, there was one name that stood out for me, just like you, and it's Modern Games because I think he is a, a truly a top class uh, miler on the grass. Whether we're talking about Europe and here, we already know he can come over to North America. We know he could run on any every surf, any kind of turf condition. We know Charlie Appleby's record bringing horses over. I just couldn't end up picking anybody as my top pick other than modern games. And Matt, I, 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 I see that we're on the same horses in <laughs> both races here. This rarely happens, but we both went uh, off the favorites in the air court. Yeah, that, that, this is very rare, Brian. Um, yeah, what, what, when I looked at the Iroquois, you know, you, you've got to look at the top three uh, favorites in Damon's Mound, Echo again, and uh, – Jace's road and, and all of them, all three of them, their performances thus far have been very impressive. They all have to go two turns for the first time. They all have to go the mile in a 16th. And for me, the decision came down to the fact that maybe I'm more confident that Jace's road is going to handle that distance and then on top of it, that he will be the third choice. Although, Brian, who knows? Echo, again, could just run them all off their feet. Yeah, and Damon's Mount could do the same. Mount, Damon's Mount has been that good. Echo, again, could be uh, a special kind of two-year-old. But <clears throat> for the same reasons that you mentioned, I am looking at Chase's Road. I, I know this is a horse they, that they really like in the barn and uh, Cox and Alba and West Point, uh, th those are connections that have been winning. Chase's Road too, uh, 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 as well, of the three, I think I have the most confidence in getting two turns and, and getting a distance. And maybe the other two knock heads a little bit early too. So yeah, the, this decision was pretty easy for me. I'm hoping we get at least four to one on Chase's Road because the other two are going to get bet in this Iroquois, but a very interesting race as we move closer to the Kentucky Derby. We're also getting closer to the Pennsylvania Derby, Matt. That's what we're gonna be talking about next week. We got the Pennsylvania Derby and the Cotillion, $2 million grade one races at parks leading the way for our show next week. So we're looking forward to that. But before we look ahead to next week, Matt, we need a parting shot from from my friend there in New Jersey, Matt Schiffman. Take it away, sir. I guess we're at that time of year, Brian, when uh, when all roads are starting to converge with uh, uh, the final prep races for the Breeders' Cup. And here we are uh, uh, with the first race on the road to the 2023 Kentucky Derby. Uh, uh, you mentioned the Pennsylvania Derby also. So there's so much going on. Uh, in racing at this time of year so stay with us at horse center we'll be talking about it there you go matt i love it um i want to thank our, our wonderful friend in in the louisville office uh, candace curtis for our race graphics thanks to derby wars our our regular sponsor each and every week the best contest site out there folks if you haven't yet subscribed to our youtube channel what are you waiting for go ahead do that now turn those notifications on so you never miss another episode of horse center we really appreciate you watching, and uh, don't forget to tune in next week. As we move closer to the Breeders' Cup, we'll be talking parks. A lot of good three-year-olds running there next week, Matt. We got that to look forward to. See you all next week right here on Horse Center. <laughs>